give God thanks for all that he has done, all that he is doing, all that he will continue to do. He is the faithful God. There is none like him, none on, like unto him, none beside him. Uh, there is no other God. He is God all by himself. And so this morning we give him thanks for this first Sunday school, first COVID-19 online Zoom Sunday school session of King's Chapel. Uh, let's see how God does. We'll see how God does. Um, before we begin our teaching, I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Lady Kemi, you join us last, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. If you could open up and bless the session in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for this glorious day that you've made. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us throughout the night. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for indeed, Lord, your mercies. They are new every morning. And we say thank you, O God. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us, Lord, and keeping us safe. Thank you, Father, Lord, for this day, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, to praise you, Lord, and to bless your holy name. Father, we say thank you, O God. We worship and we adore you, O God. We ascribe greatness unto your holy name, O God, because there is no one like you. There's no one like you that deserves the glory, or the honor, or the adoration, O God. For you are God, and you are God indeed. And so, Father, we bless you, O God. We thank you, Lord, for the plans you have concerning us today, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the services we have this morning, O God. And I pray, Father, as we go into this, this session, Father, that you will direct guide lead and teach us of god your word in the name of jesus i ask father for strength lord for pastor lord as she as she preaches the lord and as she teaches us of god that father she will teach you lord according to your heart for according to for this day of god in the name of jesus father i bless you lord and i give you praise i give you glory lord because indeed lord it shall be a glorious time in your presence and so father we worship and we adore you of god in the mighty name of jesus amen Amen. With the Bible hey, hey. in hand, it's teaching us in the school, so we do our faith declaration. With your Bibles in hand, repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is this my, Bible. my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I, am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what, I do it, what it says I can, do. I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a believer, I am a believer and, not a and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I'm a doer and not just a, not just a hearer. And my life is made better. And my life, and is, my life made is made better. After having heard the word of faith. After having After heard, having the, heard word of the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. By hearing. Hear, and hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the and word hearing of God. By the word of God. Wonderful. Uh, when we say that, do you actually take into consideration what you're declaring? Do you believe yes. the declaration? Yes. Anybody's life yes. been made better by the word of God? Oh, yes. yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Just yes. wanted to know that you are, um, when you're declaring, you're declaring what, not only what shall be, but what is. This is my Bible. I am right now. It says I am. Even though I might not feel like it, even though it might not look like it, even though I might not even behave sometimes like it, I am what it says I am. I'm declaring by faith that I can do what it says I can do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our topic this morning is the supremacy of Jesus Christ. The supremacy of Jesus Christ. Run with me. To the book of Daniel and then we're going to the book of Hebrews. We're going to be in Daniel a little bit and then we're going to be in Hebrews in between which we want a verse from Matthew as well. So Daniel chapter 4 first <coughs> and then Matthew 1 verse in Matthew and then we're going over to Hebrews. The supremacy of Jesus Christ. The God we serve is supreme. When we say supreme, what do you think supreme means? What does the word supreme mean? Above all. He's above all, yes. Anything else? Mm. Anything else? Mm. Supreme. God is supreme. <clears throat> he rules. He's in authority. <laughs> He reigns. Mm. He is. Um, he has all power. Uh, he's sovereign. 
Amen. To premium, he reigns in heaven and in earth. Uh, he rules and he reigns in the kingdom of men. Let's see that in Daniel. Daniel chapter 4, we want verse 17, verse 25, verse 32 of Daniel chapter 4. Verse 17, someone re read for me if you got it. Somebody has jumped to verse 25 and then verse 32 of Daniel chapter 4. We're going to see here where it's constantly being declared that he rules and he reigns in the kingdom of men. Verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high who ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the basest of men. <laughs> wow. Oh. All we can't, we wow. can complain about Mr. You know who all mm -hmm. we want. God has God placed him there. Has placed him yes. there and yep. he rules and God yes. reigns in the yes. kingdom of men. We might oh, disagree yeah. with whoever is in, in power, but we can disagree all we want. God mm -hmm. rules and he reigns in yes. the kingdom of, oh God, I'm getting excited already. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the first verse. <laughs> Let's look at verse 25. Hallelujah. But before we go to verse 25, it says, and so this matter is by the decree of the watchers. God is not letting anything slip. People think, oh, is God mm -hmm. watching this? Did he see that? Yes. Did, he, did he notice how yes. someone kidnapped that child? Did he notice how someone kidnapped that old person? Did he notice that they went in and made a law that is against the church? Oh, it's uh -uh. by the decree of the watchers and the, and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know. Glory to God. Yes. That the most high rule in the, in the kingdom, kingdom of, of men. And he give it that kingdom to whosoever yes. he wants. It yes. doesn't matter. Listen, there was a guy called, there was a guy called um, Cyrus. Cyrus was mm. a heathen king, but God allowed the prophets to prophesy that Cyrus would be his chosen vessel. Huh? Mm. Hello. Hello, mm. please. Naaman, you can see again um, someone who was not one of the 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 in the Jewish nation. Um, mm -hmm. He was one of the heathen. But when he was sent by his king to go to the prophet Elisha, when you read, it, he was a chosen vessel of God. Hello, we can complain about DT mm -hmm. and uh, what what's our one? Mm -hmm. What's our one calling it? Boris. <laughs> yeah, BJ. I don't know what I'm going to put it on record. BJ. All of those. <laughs> we can complain them all we oh want. God. One morning lady dresses us going there. But it is by the decree of the watchers. God yes. is in this kingdom to whoever yes. he will. And yes. he rules. Yes. Let's read verse 25 and hear what it says there that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and sh and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou till thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will we're in the book of daniel Hallelujah. chapter four sister joyce just so you can catch up there, there we have it again this Nebuchadnezzar had he had oh. a, a, a mass great wealth. He had a mass um, a great kingdom. He was ruling over the entire world, basically, all of that that side. And he arose to the place where he came out one day and looked across his kingdom and decided, "Yeah, I did this." <laughs> and God said, "Did you now? <laughs> no, you didn't." And listen, you, I'm gonna drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be among the beasts of the field, and you're gonna eat grass like a beast, and they're gonna the, the dew is gonna wet you, and you're gonna stay there until I decree, till you understand that the that I am the God who rules in the kingdom of men, and it was yeah. it was me who gave it to you. You didn't do nothing, you didn't do a thing. <laughs> oh, we're just at the second verse, verse 32 of Daniel chapter 4. We're staying there. 
and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most ruleth in the kingdom of men and mm-hmm. giveth it to whomsoever he will. There it is again. The most, I run to yeah. chapter five. The most high rules in the kingdom of God is supreme. He is supreme. He is the one with all power. Yes. He rules. He reigns. He decrees. And what he says yeah. must be done. Hey, we might not understand it, but when God got ready to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt, he needed a Pharaoh. He Mm. needed a Pharaoh. He needed someone Mm. whose heart would be hardened towards them so that he, Mm. God, could show forth his might and show forth his power. If it was somebody, (laughs) if it was somebody sat there and go, um, well, you know what? Yeah, all right, yeah, you can go, it's not a problem. Then there would be nothing for God to do, basically, with Israel and getting them out, but so that they could understand the journey he was taking them on who they were to him, what he was going to do in them, how he had raised them up from the seed of Abraham. They needed to understand that the situation they were in could have been done only by God. Nobody else could deliver them. Even the ruler over them was opposed to them going. And even when he let them go, he decided to chase them down because he thought, oh, we made a mistake. Let's go get them back. But it was all in the plan and the will of God. Read chapter 5, verse 21 for me. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruleth in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will so the same story first god told it to the prophet the prophet told it to the king and now the king um is they're they're rehearsing what happened to him later on you'll find that he himself rehearsed it again and then he started he, he started to rehearse the story of what happened and how he came to his senses and started to bless the god of heaven yes. oh god is awesome yes. god is sovereign the theme today is the supremacy of jesus christ god is mm-hmm. sovereign having all rule all authority yes. and all power and all when i check it still means means all if he's got all of it then that means nobody ain't got nothing mm-hmm. he's got all authority all rule and all power we're looking on his supremacy now let's look at matthew 28 and verse 18 matthew 28 and verse 18 Kimmy, shall I read that one? Go on, go on, read. Yeah. You gotta read. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, all power, again, here we see it. All <laughs> means all. If he's got all power, then there, there's nobody else who's got a, t- a bit or some, or he's got all mm-hmm. power. Jesus having all power. Mean, meaning he's omnipotent um let me ask you then is there anything with this jesus who has all power is there anything that would be deemed difficult for him to accomplish no absolutely nothing no nope. absolutely nothing run to the book of hebrews absolutely nothing he has all power and again yes. as i said all still means all we're going to look at we're just looking i don't know how far we're going to get is chapter one and we might may just go about three verses if we have the time. We got 45 minutes, actually half an hour left of teaching, 50 minutes of question. <laughs> Hebrews chapter one, read for me from verse one. Just read verses one and two for me first. God who is sun God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world so here here the writer is saying god who at sundry times hebrews 
begins by, or the writer of Hebrew, the author, some say it wasn't, some say it was Paul, the, the apostle, whoever it was, we're not concerned. Hebrews begins by introducing us to the eternal spirit and his working in, or workings in times past. It declared that in times gone by, God's chosen mode of speaking to the patriarchs, the fathers, was through the prophets. He used the prophets to speak to the fathers. It was the prophets who spoke to those men who would read what the prophets have written about the Messiah to see when he was going to come. It was the prophets who would declare when Israel was in problem. It was the prophets who would declare when God was going to punish or he was going to send blessing. It was the prophets who declared everything that was being said by God. He spoke to them by the prophets. He said, however, in these last days, his chosen mode of communication or God's vehicle of communication is through his son, uppercase. Whenever it refers to Jesus Christ, it is an uppercase S. Hebrews then qualifies who this son is. It lets us know that the son has been appointed here of all things. Additionally, it was via this son that the worlds were created. Now, let us examine in more detail who the Son is according to Hebrews verses 1 and 2. The first thing Hebrews tells us about the Son is that it is through Him that God has chosen to speak to us in these last days. Point number one. Number, number two, he says, The Son is now here of all things. Now, if you have, let's say you own, put, let, 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 just be the, pre, the, the king or the queen for one minute and um, your child choose one and you decide to give them everything, forget about all the other kids. You wrote everything to that particular child. Now, when that will comes into force, it doesn't matter what the other siblings say. It doesn't matter how they quarrel. It doesn't matter how they go to court. You have been appointed over everything. <laughs> it means, therefore, that it is you who have the power or autonomy to, to distribute, if you so desire, to whom you so desire. Mm -hmm. Yes? So he's been appointed here of all things. That, that word is coming up a lot. All means all. <laughs> it means if he's got all things, then uh, and nobody else ain't got nothing. Hello. Mm -hmm. He's got all mm -hmm. things. Now, being owner of all things makes him Lord. It makes the son Lord, we first then need to identify who is the son. Now, let me ask, just in case there, you know, because people have funky ideas and funky beliefs. Morning, uh, um, Jonathan, I see you there. Can we all agree the son is Jesus, or do I need to prove that through scriptures? Because I can. Can we all the agree? We agree. agree. Yes. We agree yes. the son. All right. Good. Good. All Wonderful. Right. Good, thank you. Everybody agrees. <laughs> Wonderful. So we know the Son is Jesus Christ. Therefore, we can assume safely, uh, that since we all agree the Son is Jesus Christ, now Jesus is the Messiah, the, or who should we say, this Jesus Christ. We're not talking about one of the ones who lived during the time when, because Jesus wasn't the only, let me, let me qualify something. Christ is not his last name. Hmm. There were many Jesuses around, because that was, or is, and still hmm. is, if you're in Brazil, a common name. Now, the reason he was differentiated from everybody else, they called him Jesus, the anointed one, the anointed one or the Christus, meaning the Christ. That's why he's called Jesus the Christ or Jesus the Messiah. Yes, the anointed one. So this Jesus was born of a virgin. This particular Jesus was prophesied by the prophets. There are lot lots of prophecies, prophetic utterances about his coming, what would happen during his life, his crucifixion, his re resurrection, all of that was prophesied by Isaiah and the prophets. He was wrapped. This Jesus was the one we we're talking about, was the one who was wrapped in swaddling clothes and uh, was found by the Magi laying in a manger. This mm. same son, Jesus, he is the one called the carpenter's son, the Nazarene. Yes? So we're talking about the same Jesus. Okay? Yeah. A Amen? Okay, amen. amen. Wonderful. Amen. So, and we're again, the theme today is amen. looking at the supremacy of Jesus. Now, let's look at him being Lord of all or here of all things. Run to Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, and we want, 
just about four verse, three verses from verse nine down through to verse 11, nine to 11, three verses. If you're there, anybody who's there, please read for me. We're looking on now the son being the heir of all things. We want to prove everything with scripture. Philippians chapter two, nine to 11, read. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him mm -hmm. and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I love the fact that verse 11 tells us that it's Jesus the Christ, not, not Jesus the Buddha or Jesus Masuda or some other Jesus. It's Jesus the Christ who is Lord of all. He is here of all things. All yeah. things are put under him. Every knee shall bow to him. Mm. Oh God, the son by whom God is speaking in these last days is indeed heir of all things. We're proving scripture. The next thing the Bible tells us, over to you Chantel, I forget you've got to come. The next thing Hebrew tells us about the son is that it was by him that the worlds were made. Now, that one might be a little bit more confusing since Genesis tells us that God created. It clearly says God created the heaven and the earth. That's verse one, one, one. If you don't know verse one, one of the Bible, you've never read the Bible. Verse one of Genesis chapter one says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Full stop. Hello. So hold a second. It's saying it was by the sun that God created the world. Now, can let's read Genesis 1, 1 to 5 first, just to make sure that we're, we're not reading from the Daily Mirror. Um, we're reading from, the, from the, the Bible. So Genesis 1, 1. I just want one. Let's go down to about verse 5, when he created the first day. Read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. No, and the that's earth, not what it says. The heaven, the heaven and the earth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Oz, let there be... Oz, and God said, said... Now, let's go back. We're going to get a little bit deep and theological. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm. We'll stop. And we have told you, we haven't gone into it in depth, but there's a great time span between verse 1 and verse two, because nothing God creates is created in chaos. Everything mm. that God does, he does it well. So the fact that the earth was now without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the waters, the deep, it means something had happened. The Bible is mm. silent on that, apart from maybe one or two verses scattered somewhere here and there for us to know something else had happened. But we're not going to, that's not the teaching that's going to take me away. We only got like just over 15 minutes left, six, 16 minutes. <laughs> and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, bear with, now that is understandable because God is spirit. He's the eternal spirit. He fills all things. Now, a spirit doesn't have appendages. A spirit doesn't have a head. Wait, therefore, a spirit doesn't have a mouth. A spirit, hello, somebody. But it said... We read these things and we fly over them and make it sound like, yeah, because in our mind, we see God as a man. We mm. see the spirit of God, the eternal spirit as a man. The eternal spirit of God is spirit. God is yeah. spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is in John 4, 24, God is spirit. So when it says, and God said, hold up, how? <laughs> Sorry? That the God, remember we said the God we serve is absolutely unequivocally awesome. He can do all things. Yes. We're going to get into that in a minute. It says, and God said. So he spoke mm. and something happened. Read. We're going to stay with it. Just hang on to the and God said. Let's continue. Mm. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the, for the first day. Oh, to be there and see the move of God on the waters. And how, can you imagine? It says God saw the light, that it was good. 
and he divided. How do you divide mm -hmm. light from darkness? That, that blows the mind. You have to be able to hold the light, which can you ever, can you hold light in your hands? Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. but God was able to hold the light, hold the darkness and pull them apart. Wow. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I'm getting too excited. I still got church. <laughs> <laughs> He pulled them apart and separated them. Mm. And then he called, he said, you're going to be called day and you're going to be called night. And that was it. The first day was closed. <laughs> now, the entire creation account, if you read through all of chapter one, we won't do that. We don't have time of Genesis and chapter two, you'll find the creation account. But just to confuse you a little bit more. Because we said, and God said, the spirit doesn't have a body. The Bible says it's by the son. He created all things. Lord, mm -hmm. God, you're confusing me. Let's run to St. John chapter one. Because John, this man who walked with Jesus Christ, when he started to write his book, he told us it was Jesus who created everything. We're like, John, why are you messing us up? Genesis already, Moses already told us it was God. So, sorry. Okay, so are you at, are you are you at Saint John chapter one? Now, read verses one to three for me of Saint John chapter one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Somebody got a revelation of what Moses had. Mm. Moses says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." John mm -hmm. said, yeah, in the beginning, God, by the word, created, created all things. You got to understand when God is working, he's not, we, we tend to limit God and make God seem like he's a man. The Bible says he's not a man, that he should lie. No, he is spirit. Glory to, I'm getting too excited. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, unless I've got a problem understanding English, St. John tells us that it was Jesus who created all things, and without Jesus mm. the Christ, there was nothing made that was made. Now, my question to you is, are there two creators? Nope. I only hear nope. one person. No. Nope. 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 There are. Nope. So St. John 1, 1 to 3 makes it clearer by letting us know. Excuse me. How can it be so hot one week and then so cold the next? Oh, this country. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Oh, I forgot I recorded. Don't pay me any mind. <laughs> yeah, so John 1, 1 to 3 makes it clearer by letting us know that when God created the heaven and the earth, the word, when it says, and God said, oh, glory mm. to God. That word mm -hmm. that went forth to accomplish God's command, mm. that word is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't think you got it. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> when Genesis 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And about verse 3 says, and God said, that said that oral proceeding from God is Jesus Christ. Yes, hallelujah. This son, Jesus Christ, whom the Bible has already told us is the word, is about to be described in Hebrews in even more detail. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we are about to get some more information about the son. So not, not only is he the chosen mouthpiece of God in these last days, uh, not only is he appointed here of all things, not only is he the creator of heaven and earth, but we found out, we found out in verse, um, in Hebrews 1, who was reading Hebrews 1, now we want verse 3. Read for me. In verse 3, it's just verse 3. I don't think we're going to get past verse 3 today. <laughs> Continue. Verse 3, Hebrews 1. Who being in the brightness of his glory mm -hmm. and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. 
Well, let me remind you when I when you just met me, one of, one of the things I wanted to teach you, and I hope I'm being effective in teaching you that is, and we got exactly 15 minutes, well, did, um, is when you read the scriptures, when you're reading the scriptures, you read the scriptures, that's fine. But when you're reading the scriptures in your devotion and study time, don't just run over the scriptures. Stop mm. and really consider. And if you've got your concordance, lexicon or something, go through and look at the meaning of these words. Because always keep in memory, mm. they, they were never originally written in English. Mm. Um, the New Testament was written in Greek. And so... Um, there are certain Greek expressions that you can't find an English for. And so they will band a few English words together to give you an idea of what they're trying to say in the Greek. Understand? Mm -hmm. Let me break down. And I don't think we're going to get past. I, I hope we finish verse three today. Verse three says, who being the brightness of his glory. Now, when you take brightness of his glory, let me, let, before, before I go there, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now, that's what I'm going to look at because I don't think I'm going to have time to look at the rest. The words or phrase brightness of his glory, they didn't have a english word for it so they put those together to give an understanding of what they were trying to say in the greek in the greek the word they used was ap apogasma 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 um is it only appears here in the entire scriptures it's nowhere else you can't find it anywhere else and it is formed from two greek words we call it a compound word because apo apo meaning um, off from, or it denotes a separation to go away from. And agazo, meaning beaming forth or shine. <laughs> oh, Holy Ghost, help me, Jesus. The Greek word for brightness of his glory is apogasma, meaning an off flash. So you need to take a camera and the person has a really bright flash and a flash hits you. Yeah? a brightness in order um or should i say in other words then jesus is the shine in god's glory oh you missed it let me say it again <laughs> oh hallelujah jesus is the shine in god's glory let me let me let me help let me fill in the blanks for you you cannot see God. Moses said, God, show me your glory. Mm -hmm. I mean, I walked with you for so long and you're telling me to go. If you don't come with us, we ain't going. But before we go, can you show me your glory? If I found mm -hmm. favor in your sight, show me your glory. God said, Moses, you don't even know where you are. He said, no, man, you can look upon me and live. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's look at no man can look upon me. You can't see God with the naked eyes. Wow. You cannot see his spirit. So any kind of visible thing you're going to see of God is Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to heaven. So even the shine, remember I said, God's glory is Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the brightness of his glory. He's the flash that you see. He's the shine that proceeds from him. Oh, glory to heaven. I can't teach this in now. Hallelujah. But I've got this. I was like, oh my God. Says, do you not understand? Even the glory yes. of God is the shine is Jesus yes. Christ. He's the shine in God's yes. glory. And if that wasn't enough, the writer says, he's the express image of his yes. son. Now, again, he is spirit. <laughs> you cannot see him. So for you to see an image of God's person, glory to heaven, you're, have, you're going to have to look at something visible. Yes. Hold up. Let's look at that. Um, so let me go back. Remember, the eternal spirit cannot be seen. So any visible representation of God will only be seen in Jesus Christ. Jesus the writer Christ. says He's yes. the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. The yes. express image is another terminology in scripture within the Greek 
that is being dealt with as one word. They couldn't find an English word, so they used the expression express image. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Again, it is only found here in this scripture. <laughs> oh, like the brightness of his glory, express image only appears here in the scripture. It is from the Greek word character. It's from the Greek word character. Greek word. <laughs> from the same Greek word that we get karax, to sharpen to a point by scratching. Now, let me just break that down. Think of an engraver. An engraver that um, has, uh, uh, I have, a, I have a, uh, some, some um, uh, what's these trophies here? I have one of John's golf trophy that he has. And the, the iron part of it reads, Bridge Golf Club, Pairs Match Play 2018, first John King. For them to have got that in the engraver, had to carve it, he had to engrave it into the actual metal. Imagine that. So, it's like when you think of express image, what they were saying in the Greek is it's, it's a figure stamped upon a thing. Mm -hmm. that, and it becomes an exact copy or a representation of that thing. When we think of the phrase express image, it's as though God, the eternal spirit, took a lump of clay and pressed on it mm, and stamped himself upon on it, Eba, and left a copy of himself. Then he carved it out and engraved himself on it and poured his character into Eba, say, into that lump of clay. So he stamped a figure of it, Eba, de Kosia, of himself, and it became Eba, the expressed image of God, the exact copy, the thing that we see of God. We cannot see God except we see the expressed image upon which he has stamped himself. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Holy Ghost, somebody better come get hallelujah. me right now. I can't take any more of this. We're looking at the supremacy of Jesus Christ. He hallelujah. God expressed yes. as an image. <laughs> oh, yes. hallelujah. Help me, Amen. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, just hallelujah. take a minute and praise God. I, hallelujah. I'm, too praise God. Oh, right now. I'm already tired. Oh, Thought your name, O oh God. I give you praise, O oh, God. Praise oh, Father, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor, God. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your Hallelujah. word, God. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your word, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we are running out of time swiftly. Thank you. Running out of time. You, Jesus Christ. Yourself through Jesus Christ. Is supreme. You, Jesus. He is God expressed yes. as yes. an image. He is God squeezed yes. out. Tebande kosia. Hallelujah. On the image. God ah. squeezed. Tebande. A part of himself. Hallelujah. Eh? Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yes. He put his character Hallelujah. in it. He is carved himself upon yes. it. And he sent it into the world. Hallelujah. People look at Hallelujah. me. Oh, no. He's just a second Hallelujah. person in the Trinity. Yeah. Oh, contrary. He is God in the flesh. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, just worship God. Worship God. Oh, Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Father, because I have Jesus. Father, I have you, O oh God. All of you, Lord, through Jesus Christ, O oh God. Oh, 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 Lord, thank you, Lord. 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 For expressing yourself, Lord, in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Remember at the start, the definition. Thank you, Lord. The supreme. We're talking about and looking at the supremacy hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. We gave the definition, meaning he reigns. We saw in the scripture where he yes. rules and reigns in the kingdom yes. of men. He reigns yes. in heaven. He reigns in earth. Hallelujah. There is none. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That can be by him. Oh, 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 oh,
I'm done. I'm tired now. I'm worn out. Oh, hallelujah. He is the one who has all power. Yes. Because he's God. He is the one who has all rule because he is God. He is the one who has all authority because he is God. He is the one who has all sovereignty under him because he is God. God, hallelujah, expressed as an image. When we get it, we understand. When the Bible speaks about the Son, hallelujah, referring to Jesus Christ, he's speaking about the humanity of God. He's speaking about the physical part of God that you can see. Yeah. That you can relate to. So the scripture Hallelujah. uses things like the eye of Hallelujah. God and the face of God and the mouth Hallelujah. of God. And God said and God saw. It's talking about Jesus Christ mm. now because God is a spirit here yeah? and the God, spirit doesn't yes. have a body. But he is God in flesh. refers to him as the Son in the scriptures. Yes. You always find an uppercase Thank you, Jesus, S because it's referring to the humanity of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. We are so God, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 That's why it's so glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Image of his person. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Another image of God <laughs> unless you see Jesus Christ. You cannot see oh, another glory hallelujah. of God unless the brightness you're seeing is yes. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Every visible representation of God that you see will be Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. By the hallelujah. Bible says it's by him that God formed the world because yes. God is yes. spirit. He spoke Christ out and he did all the work. <laughs> yes. oh, glory Hallelujah. To God. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said ah. he was slain from before the foundation of the world. Yes. Because he already existed, existed. then. But Hallelujah. The sonship is not Hallelujah. Forever. And we're going to touch on that probably not next week, but we'll look at it. Hallelujah. We are out of time this morning. We give our oh. praise. Are there any questions before we go any further? Glory to heaven. No. Not a question, Pastor, but just an observation or a revelation for myself, really. That's and okay. that is that that's why it's so important that we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior, because he is the flesh of God. He says, no one cometh <sighs> unto the Father. But Except by me. You yes, can't hallelujah. relate to God. You can't see him. Mm -mm. You have to speak to me. Jesus. You have to come mm. through me. I am the hallelujah. door. I am the way. If you're not Express coming to me, I don't know where you're going because there ain't no other no door to get mm. into the kingdom. There, mm. If you try to come through a window, you're a thief. <laughs> if you try mm. to come through the window, you're a robber. If you're coming mm. into the kingdom of God, the only door through to the kingdom Jesus. is Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, I'm not only the way, I'm the truth. There's no I'm truth alive. outside mm -mm, of me. Mm -mm. There is no truth beyond me. Mm -mm. I am the truth, not, not yes. any truth. I am the, the truth. Yes. And he said, I am life. God. I mm. have the life. I breathe life into you mm -hmm. at the beginning. Mm. And you became a living Nephus. It was mm. my mm. breathing oh. to that clay that you are able to walk around. Yes, yes. you might yes. even deny that I exist. But if I take the life out of mm. you, you're gone. Mm. It is my life oh, yeah. in you that gives you life. Hey, glory to heaven. We're definitely Ooh. on time. We got like 57 Hallelujah. seconds. Hallelujah. Are there any Hallelujah. other questions or points? Oh, glory to heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I am worn out now. Hallelujah. We think we can carry Hallelujah. the glory of God. Oh, we cannot. We can't manage the glory. Uh, of God. Oh, <laughs> like thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This Pastor. is what we're going to do. Oh, oh. Uh, one of your last statements was he spoke Christ out and he formed oh. the world. Huh. That's what you said. Yes. Just elaborate a little bit more for me, please. Let's go back to Genesis. 
Oh, you're mm-hmm. asking me that we got like 17 seconds. Yes. Remember what I said in Genesis? Mm. When we see um, in verse three, no, let's from mm. verse one, it says, and in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was in a form of void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm. Now, remember, yes. God is spirit. Remember what I said, he doesn't mm. have appendages. You've got to get it mm. to He doesn't mm. have mm. mouth and eyes and he's spirit. Oh, it's like air. It fills all things. Ooh. Yes? Mm. Are you with me there? Yes. And so yes. it says in the beginning, and God said, spoke. That yes. word, that mm. Jesus. Now you Jesus. pick that up in St. John. John got the revelation of that. Mm. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the mm. word of God was with God. God. Yes. And the word ah, that he uttered was God, referring to Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Mm. You get it? Yes, yes. yes. Mm. yes. All right. Got it. We are so out of well. time, people. Mm. We're going to close up. No, we're not out of time yet. We got a few more minutes. Any other questions or points? We're out of time for teaching. I forget. Ah. 15 minutes for questions. Glory to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. No point. <laughs> Praise God. Question. Oh, bless the Lord. Morning, Lady Dolores. I didn't see you there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Any other points or question? Morning, Lady Dolores. Morning. Welcome, <laughs> to Sunday, welcome to Sunday school at the end. I don't know how long you've been in there. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So let's Hallelujah. recap. Yeah. There are no other. We're going to recap in about three minutes and then we're going to pray and you'll have a bigger break so we can come back for service at 1045. We're looking, we were looking on, are still looking on, we'll continue next week with the supremacy Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. Because the God we serve is supreme, that he reigns and rules in the kingdom of men. We read about four Hallelujah. verses in Daniel. Daniel 417, Daniel 425, Daniel 432, and Daniel 521. You'll find that in the chat room. If you look, um, Sister um, uh, Chantel has already put them in. Uh, and so we looked on those where we see where the writer uh, repeated that God rules, the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and give it that kingdom, the kingdom of men, to whomsoever he will. And, we, and, and he said over it, the Bible said the basis of men. So, hey, it won't necessarily be a a, a preacher or pastor in the in the White House or in Parliament or you know the Senate or House of Lords or whatever it might be some base men but we need to understand and accept uh, they were placed there by God even when we disagree with everything yes. they say even when yes. they only talk alternative truths oh we still gotta just understand they were put mm-hmm. there by God so we looked through that and we saw that then we started looking on the fact that. Christ, Jesus Christ, when we're looking on the supremacy of Jesus Christ, says he has all power and all means all. Eh? So we wanted to look at when he says he has all power, how, who is Jesus Christ? And so we looked at from Hebrews, just verses one to three, part of three, we haven't even finished verse three, to say, um, and he showed us that God has chosen in uh, before he had used the prophets to speak to the fathers. But now he's chosen uh, his vehicle of communication is through his son. And we wanted to know who the son is. And so we all agree that the son is Jesus Christ. And we looked on the things in Hebrews that were written about him, that he's appointed here of all things. And it's by him that God created the world. And uh, we got a little bit confused with that because Genesis tells us it was God who created the world. So we had to go to John to get clarity on that, where he spoke about the word being with God in the beginning and being God. And so we looked at that. We also looked on the fact that he, every knee shall bow to him and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord, indeed, here of all things. Um, the creation we, we already spoke about, spoke about. And then we looked at the fact that he, the Bible says, he's the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. And so we we're explaining that even the shine in God's glory is Jesus Christ. Uh, oh God. And the express image the only image that of god that you will ever see is jesus christ because god is spirit he is invisible 
And so the only image of God that we will ever see will be in Jesus Christ. Anything visible, if you go to, if you have a dream and you see something, it's Jesus Christ. If you have a dream, a vision is suddenly in an open vision and you see someone come to you, unless it's an angel, it's Jesus Christ. It's all, anything visible of God that you will see, it will be, as always been, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we wrapped up there because we're out of time and we got nine, nine minutes and counting before we um, close off. So just recapping for next week, because we're going to pick up back Hebrews chapter one from verse three to continue looking on the supremacy of Jesus Christ. God bless you this morning. I hope you enjoyed Sunday school. I certainly did. And the session is being recorded and I'm going to ask, um, uh, Sister Nicola, could you close us out in prayer? And then we will come back at 1045. You don't have to log out. You can just turn your cameras off and go off. Or if you want to log out and come back, it's up to you. But we'll re restart in 25 minutes exactly. God bless you. Sister Nicola, if you could close us out in prayer, please. Most holy and everlasting God, in this time, Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord God, for your wonderful, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. Help you for a new day, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, Lord God, because we are new. There is no one in health, Lord Jesus Christ. You're the heart and you're the finisher of our faith, Lord God. And as your word has gone forth, Lord God, teaching us, Lord God, that we how we should abide and how we shall live by your word, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, God, we normally not just listen, but we may be a doer and not, a, and not just a hearer, Lord God, of your word. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, God, that you may bless each and every one of us, Lord God, and those who are listening and those who are not listening, Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray, God, your Holy Spirit may even convict them that they may come to know you as Lord and Savior of their lives, God. Give us grace, give us strength, give us um, the courage that we may carry on lord jesus christ god and for the rest of this week lord god i pray that your holy spirit may go with us lord god cover us on the on the your blood lord jesus christ and to keep us safe from all evil accidents and dangers god and let us be wary of well-doing lord god but in faith that we shall reap a crown of life lord jesus christ i pray lord god you may keep us safe lord god bless us lord god as we're going into a second session of our meeting today lord god i pray god your holy Holy Spirit may come down and fill our hearts with love and peace and joy and contentment, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, for Pastor, Lord God, that you may continue to bless her and her family, Lord God, that you may build the walks around her, Lord God, that you may keep her safe and sound, Lord God, and that you may let her continue to preach, preach teach, and, 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 and that, that your word can make a board in our heart, God. We have an answer of prayer as we look unto you and say thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. So we'll be back at 1045 for morning worship. God bless you all. See you later. <laughs> Hello, Sister Theresa. <laughs>